what type of dialysis is it? Mm -hmm. Is it intermittent hemodialysis? Is it peritoneal dialysis? Or is it CRRT? Also, when are they getting dialyzed? So we get a lot of dialysis patients on the medicine service. So I always ask my fourth year students, they need to know, is it, are they Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, or Monday, Wednesday, Friday? Because it can affect when you dose your drugs. Uh, some drugs are not affected by dialysis. Others are greatly affected. Some doses require, or some drugs require supplemental doses after dialysis. So generally, if it's that, I try and schedule it so the dose is right after dialysis and we don't have to worry about supplemental doses. Um, there's a lot of drug literature out there, or, um, you know, tertiary resources that have how you dose for dialysis. So look those up. You really need to know, are they renally eliminated? If they are, probably have to dose them for dialysis. Um, do you guys want to talk about vancomycin for dialysis? Because that's a whole different That's a whole game. different, that's a whole different beast. Um, so typically, and it's honestly institution dependent as to how you're going to handle dosing vancomycin or, or aminoglycosides uh, post dialysis. So, a lot of times, um, what institutions may do is they'll have the pharmacist grab a level pre dialysis um, based on the type of filters used for intermittent hemodialysis. We can roughly estimate that approximately 30% of vancomycin is going to be removed with the dialysis session. And so based on you know, the level prior to dialysis, you take 30% of that and saying, okay, if it's less than 20, I'm going to have to redose my vancomycin after dialysis. Um, if it's not, well, then that person can go until the next time. The other thing with that, you have to know, is that patient still making urine? Because if that dialysis patient is still making urine, vancomycin is still coming out via the urine. Um, so it's really important to know, especially for any patient on dialysis, how much urine are they making, what is the quality of the urine that's being made, um, and how is that influencing your dosing on the drugs. On the flip side, there are other institutions that will get post-hemodialysis vancomycin concentrations. Assuming a patient's not actually making urine, you know exactly how much vancomycin is in there or not. If it's too low, you redose. If it's not, well, you're not clearing anymore because they're not making urine and you're good until the next time you go to check them. Um, so that is, is definitely hospital specific. Uh, but in regards to renal dosing or which drugs you select, if you can choose a drug that doesn't undergo much renal elimination, that's the drug you choose. <laughs> um, it makes life a lot easier and, and we do that all the time um, with antibiotics. Um, so your anti-staphylococcal penicillin, so nafcillin, oxacillin, we don't dose adjust for renal impairment um, or ceftriaxone. So those are easy drugs to give these patients. Um, there are other drugs, like Dr. Bell had mentioned, that you may have to supplement post-HD. Or you can just choose a drug that you just give like a, three times a week after hemodialysis and you don't have to worry about giving an additional little dose after dialysis. Um, so looking at your dosing from tertiary sources can kind of help you choose which drug might be the best or easiest to do in these patients.